Paul, just curious how difficult it was to simulate their length and athleticism and just the difficulties of obviously executing against them. Yeah, um, obviously just watching them over the course of their season, watching some of their earlier games, and then obviously these last couple games, they've uh, drastically improved kind of since game one. Their last few games have been pretty, pretty sizable. Um, and they looked like it, you know, you, you wonder what a team does when they have a week off between games. And, you know, you, you could kind of see that out there tonight. I thought they just had a lot of pop to them. And unfortunately, we looked the opposite. We looked like a team that's been on the road for the last week. So um, physically, um, they do obviously have tremendous length and athleticism, but I just thought their overall pop um, was just better than ours. And, and that obviously accentuated that difference. Paul, uh, you didn't just look tired. You guys look like an offense that wasn't passing the ball. A lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of one or even no pass possessions. Um, was there something you guys were doing different offensively, or was that just a bunch of guys not really playing within the offense tonight? Yeah, I thought they did a really good job of kind of denying and getting up in lanes. And I, I literally showed them some Davidson clips before the game of Davidson doing the same thing. They get out in lanes, they switch a lot, and they kind of put you in a bind where you kind of feel like you have to play one-on-one. -on -one. And I thought we kind of fell into that same trap. Um, you know, the first half, we just we just could not get that ball below the free throw line very consistently. Their, their ball pressure was excellent. Um, they just kept us from being able to flatten out the ball. And unfortunately, those, those possessions just dissipated into a one-on-one -on -one basketball without a lot of movement. Paul, it's getting harder and harder for teams outside power conferences to get games like this. What have those struggles been like for you personally as the steward of New Mexico's program? And with that said, how important is it that amnesia because you're going to play Wisconsin here in less than 24 hours? Yeah, um, we obviously had an interesting start to our season. We, we you know, we were on the road last week with two pretty emotional games uh, with kind of rivals in our region and just hopped right back on a plane and came out here. So for us, you just got to take them when you can. You can't really pick them as selectively as when you want. Uh, this was a tournament that, you know, was agreed to a few years back and, and we agreed to kind of continue to stay in it. Uh, it's been an amazing opportunity for us despite, you know, the score tonight. Um, we're really happy to be out here. We got a lot of players kind of from this region, their families. Our players get to kind of come to New York and, and see it. Obviously, the game is nothing um, what we would have liked by any means. Um, but again, we, like you said, we need to have some amnesia, get back and ready to put them tomorrow. We knew this was going to be the toughest stretch of our season. It's four straight road games um, well uh, on the road the entire time. And uh, we've just got to find a way to work through it here tomorrow and, and finish strong. You've been talking about limiting turnovers all season. Um, today you had 12 in each half, and they got 20, 28 points off the book. How do you address that moving forward? Yeah, um, I, most of them, uh, you know, I. I felt, or we discussed, just came in transition. We were just, you know, trying to get out and make things happen in transition. And their speed to recover back defensively was really like nothing we've seen this year. You know, UTEP has very good transition defense. Um, New Mexico State kind of gets back and recovers, but nothing like these guys' ability to get back and get their defense set before you can get up the floor. And unfortunately, it just turned into a lot of turnovers in transition. As much as I try to kind of reel the guys back in and tell them not to look for it. You know, we've been trying to attack and transition all year long. Uh, they were just able to get back, get set, and pick up uh, obviously a plethora of charges on us. So um, we've got something, hopefully something we'll take forward with us and improve going forward. It's a magnificent basketball team, by far the best we've seen yet this year. Uh, it was definitely a jump up as far as just what we had to go against. And we've just got to get back to the drawing board and improve and, and take it as a great learning experience. Jaquan's line was one for 10 or whatever it was, and you don't play him after the 14 minute mark of the second half. Was that a discipline issue or just not his night kind of situation? Yeah, you know, he's throwing up at halftime. I, I didn't really want him to go back out there. He wanted to go. He's just unfortunately not feeling the greatest right now. Um, so I, as he went out at half, I said, look, man, you should, I don't know right now. He's like, no, I think I can go. And we let him go. And then a few minutes, I was like, you know what? We just need to shut him down. And I said, man, it's a long season. We need to get you healthy. We don't need to turn this into anything more serious. It was more of a health issue than anything. Paul, you talk about their athleticism and um, the speed, but you guys, that uh, wasn't closed down on the perimeter. Was there just lack of focus or the speed and talent, so forth? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, we, we, uh, we went into the game trying to take away certain shooters, and I thought we did a really good job. Uh, and then the guys that really weren't supposed to make them made them. Um, 
um, and kind of open the floor up for them a little bit. Um, but with, with their size advantage, especially Wiley around the rim, um, you know, we, we were really just trying to keep our bigs out of foul trouble from having to come over and help. But eventually we couldn't stop it anyways. Um, and I think Wiley just presents such a problem in there, probably for any bigs, but, but he's such a big physical specimen. It kind of started with that for us, trying to rebound the basketball. And we still have troubles with that as well. And, you know, we've kind of gone into this team in this season saying, you know what, if we can, you know, keep our bigs out of foul trouble and help rebound the basketball, we're going to have to give up some threes here and there. And uh, fortunately for us tonight, that wasn't really what hurt us. It was still the paint. It was still uh, the offensive rebounding and Wiley around the rim. And I thought that just, it just broke us uh, on, on several possessions. Uh, you were four for 19 from three. Was that what they did, or was that in, uh, you guys not taking the right shot? Probably I mean, a combination of both. Like I, like I said at the beginning, I thought their pop was terrific. I thought they looked like a team that hadn't played in a week, and I, I think it look, we looked like a team that's been on the road for seven straight days. And just unfortunately, whether it was some free throws or, or threes that were good looks, uh, they just didn't quite go down. But I'm not going to just attribute it to that. I thought Auburn was terrific. They were active. They were athletic. They had pop to them. Um, and we didn't, so that, that's kind of what happens when, when those things come together. So, real quick question on two of your guys. Uh, McQuatch Malwatch started the game off, and he was the best player on the floor for you guys anyway, and then it looked like Keith McGee was the best player down the stretch for you guys, um, two guys that aren't the ones that get talked about an awful lot. They, are, is Keith the guy that's going to get more minutes, and is McQuatch just kind of basically still doing what you want him to do? Yeah, I thought Quatch early was, was doing a really good job of just kind of cutting through their defenses and getting some things around the rim, which was great. And obviously, I think we talk about those other guys take a lot of attention, and he's kind of the unnoticed one that, uh, in situations like that, is the one to kind of score. Um, Keith obviously made some plays late and did some good things. Uh, we've got to take as many positives out of this game as we can, get ready for tomorrow, and just kind of keep building going forward. All right, one last question. Um, I think you know with with three new ball handlers on our team this year when you inject kind of three new guys um, it's just gonna it's gonna do things to your offense and they're all very talented players some of them are great games some of them not so great games but I think when you just have three new guys out there that handle the ball predominantly at the guard position uh, a lot of guys have to make adjustments and, and Vance is obviously one of them that is trying to work through it. We're trying to work through it, find a way to get a good balance for us offensively um, without it affecting our defense. And that's a, kind of what I felt happened tonight. Um, it was an ugly game really for both teams uh, offensively. I think we were shooting 31% of the half, they were shooting 30% of the half, but we just allowed too much of that to continue to dictate our defense. And they did. Um, and you know, you don't run into a lot of power five teams with this many seniors. And, and they just they showed that tonight. They had five seniors out there. Uh, they've obviously been to a, a very, very big game last year in a big stage. And, and they, they kind of wore that and they played with that. We want to get there. Uh, we're just unfortunately not quite there yet. We made some baby steps last week. Um, but this week, we, we, we need to continue to grow as a team and get to, get to where they are. Thank you, Paul.